The primary plot for this episode soon takes a back seat to what seems to be a secondary thread, as the crisis of the day is overshadowed by the inter-character drama unfolding on screen. Star Trek Discovery has identified its most prominently liked characters and places them in tense situations, and for this episode, it works. At first I'll touch on the general points and feedback, but this will be a spoiler review in the latter part, so be warned. After the last episode being a dip in the lighter tone of the show, I was worried that the series was returning to the styles of Season 1, which would be a mistake in my view, as Season 2 has been leaps and bounds better. Episode 4, An Obel for Karen, is strongly about the bonds between the crew. The allusions to mythology don't end with the title either, and my first thought on the malfunctions of the Universal Translator was of the story of Babel, and I'm glad to see Pike made the same quip to Saru. This was a good example of setup and payoff too, as Saru's fluency in 94 languages, seemingly a throwaway line from a previous episode, becomes a utilised plot point. Nice! Evidence of not just long term primary plot, but these smaller instances and character development. Saru's plight elicits a very strong response in Burnham, and Sonequa Martin Green is able to let go of the stoicism that is overlaid onto Burnham's character. Yes, more of this! These scenes go a great length to make Burnham relatable, which is something the character needed, and it's reassuring to see that Martin Green can bring those depths to bear, something not always clear in the more emotionally repressed Vulcan raised Burnham. The compassion on display from Anthony Rapp would do Dr. Colber proud, and Mary Wiseman's Tilly continues to draw my empathy as she is continually confronted with the unknown. It's also fun to see that Jet Reno Engineer Extraordinaire is still alive and remained aboard the USS Discovery as another engineer. Seeing her classic technology and pride in her handiwork reminds me of some other engineers we've seen. Her clashing with Stamets' views on environmentalism reminded me of real life stances on insert chosen trigger topic here, and I like that Stamets can still be a prickly git on the outside too. Of course, the centre of the show was Doug Jones, whose character I can't really get into without spoilers, so warning from now on. Suffice to say, ouch my heartstrings. Okay, so I knew Saru would survive. But in the moment, I forgot what I knew, and I felt that his life was genuinely ending. The standout moment for me in this episode was not the triumphant survival of the Discovery, nor the perilous Spore Dweller, but the moment where the crew stood for Saru, as he left the bridge, possibly for the last time. I was reminded that, although the crew respects and accepted Pike, Saru was the captain they chose. They saw something in him. And now we've all seen it too. He may be young, but he's the commander they turned to when the night was darkest. No wait, that's Game of Thrones. But you get my point. He is very much the anchor point for most of the crew, and the majority of the fans agree that he is a linchpin for the show. His survival after the supposed zenith of his species life cycle raised troubling questions that the show was quick to highlight. Throughout the Kelpians' life, they are expected to die after they've reached a certain point, but in truth, it seems to be a new stage in their life cycle. I guess the notion is that when they reach an age where they are no longer subject to prey-like mentality, the Bao have convinced them that they cannot live beyond this time, so they're butchered and eaten. But Saru, apart from his society, has discovered that once the Vahar Eye passes, they emerge from the other side, a far more stable individual without the constant urge to fear. I look forward to seeing where this will take him. Look how far he's developed with a handicap. Now it's gone. What's he to accomplish now? And how's he going to bring this knowledge to his people? In theory, the Prime Directive may forbid him from interfering as a Starfleet officer. So could he even be forced to resign his commission? Interesting roads ahead, I think. Meanwhile, we get introduced to number one, still without official name, played by Rebecca Romain, and that's about it. She doesn't have much to do in the show, merely stopping by to update Pike on the status of the Enterprise and supply him with some data on Spock. 
She maintains the cool, calm attitude that was part of the character, and I do get the sense that her and Pug are old friends, which I guess is all we can expect from such a short cameo. There is a suggestion that she'll return later in the series, though. There's also another retcon discussion, and Pike orders that while they're retrofitting the Enterprise to pull all the hollow emitters, as they don't seem to be helping the ship and, in fact, may be the cause of cascading power failures. And they remind him of ghosts. Or perhaps illusions? A little forced, but alright, I'll buy it. I mentioned in a comment I'm curious to see how they'll retcon events, but I can't tell if I'm curious, excitedly, or morbidly. Finally, Tilly's arc has taken a turn from menacing to terrifying for her. The simple fact that we don't know the Spore Dweller's intent mirrors the situation the Discovery finds itself in with the dying entity. And perhaps it's because I just got finished watching Night Flyers, but I don't trust the big glowy space blob. Nor the Spore Blob. Stamets finally breaks through in communication with it, and we learn that his spore drive has maybe been damaging the lifeforms that live in the mycelial network. This would help explain why the Federation abandoned this avenue of research, but not every power that knows of the spore drive cough, clowns, cough, share the same principles. So I still feel that more needs to be done to physically cut off the network. Perhaps that'll be Stamets' next struggle. Isolate the network and undo his life's work against destroying another intelligent culture. This episode was overall a pretty great addition to the narration, and built on the characters that we've come to know by exposing them to new aspects of their personas. Tilly's fear, Burnham's grief, Stamets becoming the emotional support instead of needing the support, and Saru's mortality most of all. A very well done to the cast for this one, and although still hurried in some places, this is just going to be an overall criticism of the show based on conscious choice, it seems. Though the majority of this episode was slow and paced well where it needed to be. Saru's goodbye and Stamets singing with Tilly to calm her, for example. On a personal level, I'm feeling less inclined to take a microscope to Discovery and point out all its flaws, as the show seems to be doing its damnedest to make me like it. So... alright, you can have a little slack now. Just don't make me regret it. Not that I actually have any power over the direction of the show, and that's probably an entitled point of view, which is why it's here at the end of the review and not during. So, thanks for watching, and I hope to hear what you thought of this episode, and the overall season 2 so far. Thanks again, and until next time, I've been Rick. Goodbye.